If you've got a worship guide with you, we'd love for you to try to follow along with, um, with me. Uh, if not, um, you know, you always, we always have the replay of it um, the, the next week. Uh, Brother Trey does a real good job of getting that um, on many different forums. By the way, I always remember that. Our messages are not only on um, YouTube, and then for those of you who have PRTC cable, we're on there seven days a week. But we also, um, he, he puts things on Spotify, which is just a, a, a way that you can hear things through um, a podcast form. Uh, in case you're riding along, almost everybody got a smartphone. Even great great grandma's got smartphones nowadays. Okay, um, you know I, I've always told you before. Once your great grandmama has a, a smartphone, which you know good and well she don't know what to do with it. That's a whole another sermon. Um, and also, if your great grandma is on Facebook, the end might be near. So I I I, I wasn't as quick into my jokes the first service. I really had to get my groove, so I appreciate them letting me warm up uh, before I get to you. Listen, uh, this message entitled, Finding God's Forgiveness, it's, it, I want you to look at it this way. It's not only for understanding, but it's, it's going to be a GPS that God's going to use mixed with his truth, mixed, mixed with his spirit to get you to a place that maybe you aren't fully at right now. First thing we need to know when it comes to God's forgiveness is this, and that is that God's forgiveness is desperately needed by everyone. God's forgiveness is desperately needed for everyone. And when I say desperate, I mean desperate. We all have this terrible disease. It's called sin. And, and you've heard me say this before. Um, uh, sin will, will um, uh, cost you more than you wanted to give up, and it will always take you further than you ever thought it could. Sin when it's just allowed to, to, to just do whatever it does, it, it, it steals our peace, it robs our joy, it takes away, in certain cases, as we'll look at, it can, it can take all hope. But it certainly wreaks havoc when we don't take sin seriously. Romans 3.23 says, For everyone has sinned. And we all fall short of God's glorious standard. So in case you need to make a, a note there, uh, sin by its very definition is, is, is when we don't do things that are right in God's eyes. When, when things fall short of what he wants. And we all have those times. The Bible says we're all sinners. In fact, I mean, we're, we're born sinners. You know, even a child, even, even long before they can talk to you, they know how to work you. They know how to deceive you. They know how to hide things from you. So you say, what is sin? It's falling short of God's standards. It's not being perfect. Is there anybody perfect here today? Uh, if so, don't raise your hand. Just meet me afterwards so we can talk further. <laughs> you know, uh, I, in fact, I used to say this. I said, if somebody tells you that they're perfect and that they have no sin whatsoever in their lives... I would advise, don't even be on the same row. I'm not even talking about beside them. Don't even get on the same row because you don't want that lightning to hit you. But I want you to write down a scripture. I don't have it up on the screen. James 4, 17. Because it gives the clear, clear definition of, of, of sin. James 4, 17. It says, remember. Okay, because sometimes we forget. It says, remember it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. So what is sin? Sin is... You um, doing things that you know God does not approve of. Sin is also knowing things that God has either made clear in his word or impressed upon your heart, and yet you aren't doing those things. Sin is basically disobedience to God, whether intentional or non-intentional, because we really don't have to intentionally sin because we're so naturally good at it. But I ask you, have you ever lied? Have you ever cheated? Have you ever had a, a bad thought? Have you ever said something and did something that you knew completely that God wasn't going, man, that's great, my child? If so, the Bible says that you are a sinner. Listen, we all need God's forgiveness because we have a sin problem. Sin by its very nature. I want you to write these, these things down because this really affects your relationship with God. Sin by its very nature does this. It, it turns us away from God. Okay? Sin, sin's the opposite direction of what God would have you to do, think, or feel. 
It also, it distances us from God, okay? If you don't get God's forgiveness, if you don't, if something's not done to be dealing with the sin in your life, it will hinder your relationship with God. You cannot be close with God and continually live however you want to live and live in sin. Sin can also, though, here's where it's at its, its, its worst thing. This is why we really care about the love, lift, and leading people to Jesus. Is because the worst thing that can happen from sin is sin can eternally separate us from God. Romans 6, 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So on one hand, it's going, listen, you're going to die, but the Bible also is very clear. You're going to give an account of yourself before God. And only those who are forgiven and in Christ will have this free gift it's not something you deserve. It's not something you can earn. That's why it's free. But you still got to know how to, how to get there. So sin, it brings death, but it also brings um, a, a penalty beyond this life if we don't deal with it, if someone doesn't deal with it for us. But yet the free gift of God is eternal life, meaning if you find out how, how you can deal with this sin problem, and God can help you deal with that, you can have eternal life in heaven. Listen, you can't have an eternal relationship with God without his forgiveness. You can't maintain a close relationship with God without his forgiveness. So if you don't understand how to deal with sin every day of your life, uh, the devil will just have his way with you. He will have his way with you. Now, to show you how it affects our, our relationship with God, look at James chapter 4, verse 8. It says, come close to God. And God will come close to you. You could have stopped there. But it goes on to say, wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and this world. There's God's will, there's your will. There's God's way, and there's your sinful nature. You've got to understand, you can't get right with God, you can't get close with God without dealing with sin. How many of you, you've heard the scripture before? I want to say it's Second Chronicles. It's either First or Second Chronicles 7, 14, and 15. And it says, hey, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Everybody wants the healing. Everybody wants things to be made right. But everybody's not wanting to seek what's right. And so you, if, you don't, if you get rid of the, 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 the forgiveness you can't have the healing. You can't have the peace. You can't have closeness with God going your way. Listen, if not for God's forgiveness, none of us in here could be called children of God. Without God's forgiveness, none of us can overcome sin and our past. If not for God's forgiveness, none of us could truly look forward with hope because we would only be the, the, the final product and sum of our worst mistakes. God's word says this, the only way we can find eternal salvation is through God's forgiveness. The only way we can draw closer to God is God's forgiveness. The only way we can expect for heaven to come down to earth is to get on our face and find God's forgiveness. But secondly, when it comes to God's forgiveness, that forgiveness is found through Jesus' shed blood. God's forgiveness is found through Jesus' shed blood. Now, I was just trying to modify things. And so that's the reason why that's all the words are up there. But you need to hear this. It's only found. You need to put that. Christ's forgiveness is only found through Jesus' shed blood. If I told you you had an, had an aggressive cancer, you would want to know. You'd say to the doctor, okay, well, is there any way I could possibly could treat this and that, that, that you could either lengthen my life or, or, or save my life? But what if I told you that you all, and myself included, have the most aggressive cancer there is? It's called sin. See, cancer itself or any other life health issue, it can only affect the body here. Sin can send a soul to hell. Sin has a much greater consequence than anything that we deal with temporarily in this life of our trials and our struggles. The only cure for sin and the only um, way to God's forgiveness is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Scripture talks about it over and over again. 
we hear the part where John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. So we hear that part, but, but because he loved the world, because he loved sinners just like you and me, it says he sent his one and only son so that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Everybody hears that and they go, man, that's great. Jesus, you know, died on the cross for me. But it goes on to say in verses 17 and 18 that, that, that those who believe in him will not be condemned, but those who do not believe in him stand condemned already. See, sin destines us to deserve hell. And we couldn't save ourselves. And so God had to send a Savior. You know, people say, well, well um, how can God be so loving and yet send people to hell? He doesn't send people to hell. He sent his son Jesus so that you don't have to go to hell. The only cure for sin is for us to rest and believe in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 8 says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing sometimes to understand that God loved you at your worst. You didn't have to do anything to deserve his love. He said, hey, you know what? I love you. You mean everything to me. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm letting my son die on the cross. And so when we get down on ourselves, let's say you're a believer in Christ, and you go, man, I just feel so unworthy. We've always been unworthy. We've always been unworthy. But God has proved that his love is not dependent upon how we feel about ourselves. Sometimes the way we see ourselves is far, far, far from how God sees us. Listen, only by grace through faith in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection does the Bible say that we can find forgiveness of sin. Look at Ephesians 1, 7. It says, God is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom. Again, it was a gift with the blood of his son, and he forgave our sins. Hebrews 9, 22, it says, In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood... There is no forgiveness. This is when we move from the Old Testament to the New Testament and the new covenant in Christ. As Jesus comes along and says, listen, no longer do you have to sacrifice something, but I'm going to sacrifice my son for your salvation once and for all. Jesus says in Matthew 26, 28, he says, this is my blood. It's what you hear at the Lord's Supper. This is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. In Romans 8.32, that I don't have up there for you, but you can write that scripture down. Romans 8.32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Think about that for a moment. If, if God loves you so much that he's willing to send his son and will let him and watch him die on a cross for your sins, why would he not give you everything else that you need? He's already showed you that he's willing to go to the extreme. Anything else in between is nothing for him. When he tells you, hey, I got plans for you, plans to give you a hope and a future, he means that. When he says, hey, I'm going to help you, I'm going to work things out with you, through you. You're going to be with me forever in paradise one day. He means that. He's, Lord, he's going, hey, you know what? I didn't spare my only son for nothing. Doesn't that prove to you how much I love you? But thirdly, when it comes to God's forgiveness, God's forgiveness is amazing and life-changing. God's forgiveness, it is amazing and life-changing. Just made me think about how um, you see people, the bigger and bigger the, um, the national lottery numbers get to, people are like, man, if only I could win a billion dollars or even a million dollars, let alone a hundred thousand dollars. And you sit back and you go, man, if I had that money, it would change everything. What if I told you I know plenty of people who got money and they got nothing inside that gives them peace? You can have everything. In fact, I think I was seeing on social media yesterday of, of um, one of the um, uh, uh, basketball players for the NBA 
who, who makes 30, 40 million a year, and yet he's posting on his Twitter account that, hey, I just, I just can't find peace. And people just trying to post and post underneath things saying, hey, that's because the peace ain't in your status or your bank account. Peace can only come from God. Inner peace can only come from God. And inner peace can only come and be found and be kept through Jesus and what he's done for us. Listen, God's forgiveness is greater than your greatest sin. You've got to remember that. God, God's forgiveness is greater than your greatest sin. God's forgiveness also is beyond your human understanding to comprehend. 1 John 1, 9 says, If you confess your sins, he is faithful to forgive you of your sin. By the way, I mean, Jesus died for your sin, but that doesn't automatically, uh, that makes forgiveness possible. But you've got to receive the gift. You've got to take the gift. You've got to believe the gift. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to step towards him and, 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 and ask for his forgiveness. Notice it doesn't say if you confess a sin. It says sins, plural, whatever that sin is. Anybody who's trying to come to me with someone who's still breathing and still able to think, feel, and talk or whatever else, and someone tells me that their sin is not forgivable there is no such thing as long as you're breathing if you turn to the lord that he will not forgive doesn't matter what everybody else thinks of you you know i i i mean i can't help but think about all the stuff that you see swirling about people like an alec murdoch listen to me any true child of god knows in their heart doesn't matter who you are where you stand with any of it how you feel about any of it what, what you sometimes can't comprehend is how God loves Alec Murdoch just as much as he loves you. In fact, if you're in Christ, he's more concerned for Alex if he doesn't know Christ. Listen, God doesn't just forgive some sin. He forgives all sin. Here's one of the tactics that the devil tries to use with you is if you start drifting from your faith, if you, if you, if you feel like you're miles away from God and, and you hadn't been in church or you hadn't read your Bible or you haven't been praying except when you had to throw, throw out um, like, um, what, is, what is the, um, the jelly guy, the Hail Mary's? Jelly roll. That's, that's your, listen, that's your, middle, that's your middle ground right there. This is, this is when I give you a little soft touch. Jelly roll. He'd be so glad I put a plug in for him. I know why that song's so big, because everybody knows that, 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 again, everybody trying to throw prayers as deep as they can when they're desperate. But what Satan likes to make you think is that because you're unworthy, because you don't deserve it, because you haven't been doing this, 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 or this, or this, you can't bow your head and pray. Yes, you can. You can bow your head and ask his forgiveness. You can bow your head and let him reset you, let him make things right within you. Listen, you know what's, what's so amazing about God's forgiveness is um, it goes further than we can comprehend. And it makes no sense. And it's for everybody. He promises to forgive any and all sin. And, and here's where his forgiveness is way set apart from our human ability. And that is he, do, he never holds it against us. After, you, after he has forgiven you, you're forgiven. If he forgave you yesterday of everything you did in the past, you're forgiven. It's done. It's finished. It is paid in full. People around you might not forget what you've done, but he's not sitting there going, hey, let me hold that over your head. He's going, no, let me use that for my glory. And so he, he's not holding anything against you. And the Bible says in Psalm 103, 12, it says, as far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Listen, God's word says his forgiveness of all sin is something that is amazing. Now, I want you to write this down in your notes. God, the scripture is very clear that, that when it comes to God's forgiveness, you need to not abuse it or forget it. I don't have that up there, but just write this down. You don't need to abuse it or forget it. Some people say, well, I'll just do whatever I want to do. God forgives. Well, he does. But if your heart really is turning to him, you're not wanting to go down that way again. Amen? The Bible says just because grace abounds doesn't mean we should abuse that grace. And we certainly shouldn't forget 
what only the grace of God has done for us. See, when we forget where we came from, we can't connect with anybody because we think we're here and we think they're there. And we're all here. Okay? We just sometimes forget it. Psalm 103, verse 2 and 3 says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins. Listen, he didn't, he didn't forgive you of some things. He, he forgave you of everything. He didn't care what you did when you were younger or what you did in that last relationship. He cares about the fact that you, your relationship is restored today and he's taking you forward towards a brighter tomorrow. Psalm 32, 1 and 2 says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them and in whose spirit is no deceit. Listen, God does an amazing work of forgiveness for us and in us so that he might display his amazing grace through us. Look at what the Apostle Paul said. He made clear to people, 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 17. He said, here's a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. I want to stop right there and help you understand. Paul's not the only one. He's sitting there trying to teach us, hey, that we all need to not look at things like, hey, I'm here and they're there. And, you know, we got this level sin and that level sin. Listen, sin, sin in God's eyes. It either is or is not his will. So by very nature, we're all sinners. And he's like, listen, you know what? Let this be our testimony when we're talking to people. Hey, I'm not perfect. I, I have screwed up. I am screwing up. I will still screw up. In fact, I think my youngest son is going to tell me I shouldn't have said the word screw up, and I just did it four times. <laughs> yep, I trust me. He will, as soon as I get in the car, that's my associate. He is, he's more by the book than me. Let's just put it this way. <clears throat> In fact, if you feel any kind of strength coming... Besides the fact that I had to lean in with desperation because I only slept four hours last night because I was just in a discomforting state, it's because my, um, my son came to my bed last night, did just what he always does, just prays down heaven to earth, and uh, I'm a byproduct of it. So um, just know he, he helped in this message. I want to read this again. It says, this is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst of sinners. Then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. People need to see your stuff and your junk because then when they're going through the same junk, they can find hope or at least know it's there. That's why, listen, you don't pocket your pain. You let God use it as a platform. When you, when you pocket your pain, all you've done is double it because now it's, it's not only is it pain, it's wasted. Like all, all of that stuff you went through, it's just wasted. Now, what, what God continues to show me is that, that he knows how to refurbish. He's the chief recycler. And here's why he does it. Verse 17, all honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal king, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Amen. By the way, Jesus was the only man to live and never die. He was only dead three days. Listen, God's forgiveness, it is able to change everything and everyone. Don't give up on anybody. Because God's never given up on you. Don't give up on yourself because, God, listen, God, if, he, if you'll let him, he'll change your heart. He'll change your life. He will release you from your past so that you can live forward. Listen, you can't look forward when you're looking back all the time. You can't. I mean, in fact, anytime you find yourself where you're just consumed about the past, you know in that moment you're not living out or getting to experience God's best in the present. Because you, you're, you're historical. He can change your future for all of eternity. You've heard this scripture before. He who the Son sets free, they are free indeed. Listen, you've all been forgiven of all your sin and made new in Christ if you know Christ as your Savior and Lord today. 
whatever you've done in the past and present, you can be forgiven. You know, um, you know the difference between a um, Christian and a non-Christian? One's a sinner headed to hell. The other one's a sinner saved by grace, headed to heaven. It's not because n- neither, neither one aren't just the same. It's just one has hope, the other one hasn't found it. Now I want to go to number four here when it comes to God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness is our example to follow. God's forgiveness is our example to follow. Now at first you're going to hear this and you're going to be like, man, why are we going down this dirt road? Because Jesus said this one matters a lot. Jesus tells us that if we are a blood-bought child of God, if we have experienced his forgiveness and seen how he forgives us and how he forgives others, we are to forgive others the same way that he has forgiven us. Colossians 3.13 says, Forgive as I have forgiven you. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. You don't have to like something someone has done or endorse it or support it. You may have to distance yourself from it. You may have to distance yourself from certain individuals. I've had to do that in my life. But no matter what, love is never an option for a believer. If you're a true believer in God, claiming to to represent Christ, you need to represent his love. Because without love, you aren't nothing but a clanging symbol. You aren't nothing but a bunch of preaching words. People, Listen, how many of you know people don't like to hear from anybody who they can't feel that they love them? No, nobody, listen, this world, the reason why they're not running into a lot of churches, they've already heard the word from people that ain't nobody, um, unless you like them, you're not going to feel welcome. Around here, we're, we're real dead set on the fact that we aren't trying to start a club, Okay. We're, we're not even focused on who we keep and we're focused on who we reach in. And, and the only reason we have that mentality is because we want everybody to matter. Every one of you, we want you to matter and we want all of us to have, to, to feel the same value of all those who walk through these doors or that we meet out there. Listen, we got to be very careful when it comes to family, friends, or anybody else that we choose to forgive because Jesus says that this is the way we have to pray. Matthew 6, 12. And forgive us of our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. Now, humanly, we do not have the capability to forget. Okay? And so sometimes we have to go to counseling for things. Sometimes we have to um, distance ourselves from things. Sometimes we have to just go, God, man, this is going to take some healing. But what we have to choose no matter what is, um, y'all, y'all said it or heard it before, God don't like ugly. Two wrongs don't make a right. Listen, God loves that person that you or I would like to beat up the most. God still loves them just as much as he loves you. They matter just as much to him. And by the way, what I find with a lot of people who do a lot of say, um, just unexpected things. There's always things, there's a war waging within. It's not personal. It's, it's, it's where they're at, okay? I tell people that a lot of society, they're like a newborn baby. You know, you grab the baby and you just shook them, okay? They spit up all over you and you want the Holy Ghost at that point. Um, that's how people are out in society. All you got to do is shake them a little bit. And since there's craziness within, craziness comes out. And so sometimes you need to know that uh, the, a person who you're, mis- you're thinking is just mad is really sad. They don't have what you have. They don't know what you know. They, they aren't walking with the peace that maybe you have. They've got to find that. You can't have peace with other people when you don't have peace with God. But listen, you should never give up on anyone. The Bible never gives us the, um, the, the ability or the permission to play Judge Judy, okay? You you can't play the judge. Also, something God's really taught me over the last decade of ministry, um, I'm not the Holy Spirit. You you hear what I'm saying? I'm I'm not the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we think, man, if I'll just get this person straight, if I just tell them like it is, again, I mean, that's that's, that's me just telling. If I go full Crosby mode on you, okay? Y'all know most of the Crosby's is crazy. But I'm not related to any, by the way, in this county. So don't, don't hold it against me. 
But if I just, if I just could get them straight, fix them. But see, God's not asked you to fix them. God has asked you to love them. Luke, 8, Luke 6, 36 and 37 says, Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Listen, the best way that you can be hopeful about any relationships with family, friends, or anybody is, to, is you choose to walk in Christ. You choose to walk in love. You choose to, to, to walk in forgiveness to the best of your ability with his help. If I had to show you how much this matters and affects your relationship with God and, and can hinder your relationship with God, look at Mark eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus says, if you're at the altar and you hold anything against your brother, forgive them so that you will be forgiven. You can be a Christian and yet not be walking closely to the Lord because your attitude is outside the will of God. And so what you got to ask God, listen, not, not every sin is an action. Sometimes it's an attitude. And it normally starts as an attitude before it even becomes an action. Listen, Jesus, when he was asked, how much should we forgive others? And he's like, man, how many times can you? Endless. And if we're to forgive like Christ, I mean, Christ is still saying, Father, forgive them while he's hanging on the cross, while he's looking at the people who put him on the cross. He says, I want you to forgive others the same amount I have you, countless. And let me tell you one thing for sure that I do know about reaching society. I do, I do know what it's like to, to reach a lot of people that are in ditches. And you know how you do it? You love them in the ditch. You love them in the ditch. Doesn't mean you stay in the ditch with them. Sometimes, though, you got to get in the ditch with them just for a little while. you got to love them right where they are because that's how Jesus loves us. He met you where you are and loved you despite of who you were. And that's how you, that's how you do it. You, you, if, if, listen, people, people can tell when you're putting on a front versus genuinely caring. People can tell when you are holding a grudge versus you're upset about something, but you still love them and you still forgive them even if you can't forget what they've done to you. I mean, I've never had anybody in my life with any kind of difference that I, I wouldn't give them a hug right now, whether I'm in food line or anywhere else. I got people that ain't looking for a hug from me. And quite honestly, I hate to tell you this, but because I might get locked up one day. I'm more bound to go forget what my wife told me to get from the grocery store. I'm running down there grabbing the buggy and giving them a hug from behind. Okay? I mean, I'm just that crazy. I understand everybody's built different. Like my son said one time, that's just the way God made me. But I could also get an elbow. You know? Some, some, listen, sometimes we do have to, we have to stay back or step back so that we don't do and say things that we shouldn't. But we must forgive others if we too want to be forgiven jesus says he without sin throw the first stone what i love about jesus and how he does things he just levels the playing field he's like listen no you pharisees and sadducees um it ain't just about being uh, some uh, religious nut everybody here matters everybody here matters everybody here is a, a sinner our, our, our best righteousness, the scripture says, is nothing but filthy rags. Our best day of, of what we would call perfect, still a sinful day. Which brings me to this last thing, number five, when it comes to God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness is received by faith and repentance. God's forgiveness is received by faith and repentance. Now, it's one thing to hear a message about God's forgiveness, but how do you, how do you receive that? How do you know that you have that in your own life? It is through faith. And repentance. You say, what is repentance? Repentance is turning around. It is an about face. It is turning from seeking your way or the world's way or your agenda. It's, it's turning from that and saying, Father, forgive me of my waywardness. I desire to turn from that lifestyle and turn towards the way that you would have me to live. Do we instantly become perfect? No. Time proves to us that we're, we're still having to walk in, in step with that. But the way that we ever even become a Christ follower, the only way that we become a, a saved is by grace through faith in Christ Jesus and repentance of sin no matter what age and time we live in. 
cannot be overlooked. I was doing a funeral a while back, and, and um, when, when you do the number of funerals I do, you, you, you really get to, to know funeral directors and, and, and all the people that work with them real well. And, and, and one of the guys, um, right before I was getting ready to walk in to preach this particular funeral, he just says out of the blue to me, one of the funeral workers, he's like, um, let me guess, this guy's going to heaven too. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm just telling you something I've seen with a lot of people. He said, I am yet to be at a funeral where the person didn't sound like a saint and wasn't headed to heaven. And it really captured my attention. It, listen, it, 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 we can't put anybody to heaven and we can't put ourselves into heaven. Goodness won't get you there. Money can't buy you there. What you think other people think about you, it doesn't matter what other people think about you. It matters what God knows about you. And God knows whether or not you have repented of your sin and believed in Jesus. Look at Mark 1.15. It says, Jesus preached us all over during his, his earthly ministry. It says, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The good news is God loves you. Jesus died for you. And if you repent of your sin and you believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection for the forgiveness of your sin, and you, you confess Jesus, not just your Savior, but your Lord and now leader of your life, because when there's a genuine repentance and a commitment to Christ, there will be a genuine change in direction of your life. What is the good news? The good news is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Acts 10, 43 says, all the prophets, they testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Again, there's nothing you do, once again, to deserve it. There's nothing you, you can do to earn it. But those who believe in him and those who genuinely repent of their sin, asking his forgiveness, he's going to forgive you. And now, whereas you before, you were destined to bust hell wide open, you are now destined to for heaven. Listen, Christians only receive forgiveness when they acknowledge their sin, they repent of that, and they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Luke 24, 47, Jesus says, there is forgiveness of sin for all who repent. Most people, even if they don't know a scripture, and they've heard about the, the cross scene where Jesus was on the cross and had a thief and this and that person to his right, to his left, and and, and one of those chose to believe in Jesus, chose to, to, to evidently repent of their sin and, and, and say, Jesus, please remember me when you get in paradise. And, and even though that person had no ability, since they were just hours from death or minutes, they had, that thief on the cross beside Jesus had no ability to go right all of his wrongs. No ability. No ability to go relive how he wishes he would have lived. By the way, that thief on the cross, it represents this. Just because sin is forgiven doesn't mean sin doesn't have consequence. See, a lot of times people think, man, um, you know, sin is just so good. No, sin always takes. It always takes you further than you wanted to go and cost you more than you wanted to give up. And so the thief on the cross, it represents that. He couldn't go redo life, and he couldn't even live any longer because now they were going to take his life for, for the sins that he had committed, the laws that he had broken. Jesus had not broken any law. And yet, just from him confessing Jesus as Savior and Lord, Jesus said, today, literally today, you will be with me in paradise. It shows us that God's forgiveness is not based on our performance, but upon our repentance and the genuineness of our faith. Acts 2, 38, after Many thousands had heard the gospel. Peter said this in Acts 2.38. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Listen, when you admit your sin, and you believe in Jesus Christ, and his death, burial, and resurrection, and you commit your heart to him, you've committed your life to him. And you go through those baptism waters just saying, hey, you know what? Not only have I been washed in the blood, but I am now a Christ follower. I'm not just another world follower. I want you to hear this as we close out. Psalm 51, verse 7 through 12, verse 17 as well. 
Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a a loyal spirit within me. Other translations say a right spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and, and make me willing to obey you. When you have genuine repentance, you genuinely want to obey him. You're not just looking for a bailout. You're looking for things to get right and real. Verse 17 says, the sacrifice that you desire, Lord, is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, oh God. Listen, God lavishes grace when people humble themselves before him. God will forgive you of any sin. Don't ever let anybody else make you feel or think anything otherwise. Anytime you find yourself living in sin, such as I do daily, Man, the weight of sin is heavy, isn't it? Especially if you're a child of God, because see, you got the Holy Spirit in you. And that Holy Spirit, God's Spirit living within you, you can't be in peace when you know you're at odds. When you know that, 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 that hey, you know what, you're not approaching this right, or you didn't deal with this right, or, or what have you. Oftentimes, I'll be um, headed to preach to y'all, and I just, I just find myself just, I, I, again, you got to be clean. You understand me? You got to be clean. And in, in order for me to be a vessel that God could just work through, I got to do the same thing I'm telling you. I got to get real and right with Him. I got to rest in the blood of Jesus Christ. I got to genuinely repent of my sin, believe Him, trust Him, and keep letting Him take me by the little hand with His big hand. Romans 4, 7, and 8 says, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. Would you bow your heads with me today? Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you that there's not a sin that you hold against us, Lord, when we repent of that sin and we believe in your son, Jesus, who died as our Savior. And Lord, we right now, Lord, we just pray that anyone that is here or might be listening If they do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, Lord, I pray today, this very moment, would be the day that they would find themselves like the thief on the cross saying, hey, I might not have tomorrow. So Jesus, please forgive me for where I failed you. I believe in your son, his death, burial, and resurrection. Please come into my heart, be my Savior, and be my Lord and leader from this point forward. Lord, your word says if we, if we confess you as our Lord, Lord, we will be saved by grace through faith in what Christ has done for us that we could not do for ourselves. God, thank you for the forgiveness that you give us. Lord, that has been limitless. It was not conditional in any form or fashion. Lord, may we as Christ followers not forget what you have done and the grace that you have given. And Lord, may we be a reflection of that to others that we come encounter with. God, I pray, Lord, today, whatever it is that you were speaking to the heart of your people over, I pray that they would say yes to your invitation today. I pray, Lord, that if they need to come to this altar, God, that they will come to this altar of grace. Lord, I pray if they need to let somebody know that they made a decision to give their heart and life to you or to rededicate their life to you, God, or or to take that next step of believer's baptism. I pray today they would let somebody know. Lord, we thank you for your amazing grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us? I'm available here should you want to speak with me or me pray with you.